How did that change your life as a musician? Wow. How did that that privilege change your life? That pilgrimage? Yes. I don't know. My life changes every second. <coughs> my life changes every half a second. So uh, maybe you, could, you should ask me, what did I find there? Or how did I react to going there? Well, I went there strictly for the religious aspect. And uh, that was all. To go see the roots of my religion. And that's all. That's a curiosity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not because I can't practice my religion outside of India. Or outside of Benares. So how how do politics how do you see politics in the sense of not nationalism but as an African? Uh, how do you translate or perhaps I should say convey the message to young ones Africans? What? What message? Uh, the message of loving oneself as an African or accepting oneself as an African. Yeah. Um so I tell you my experience. So I was born into a colonial country dominated by the British influence. I went to British school, I learned to speak English with a British accent, and I was changed uh, into a black Englishman, almost. But then at a point I rebelled and, and, and left that system. And uh, my luck is that nobody pushed me into this. I don't know how I came to be what I am. Because all my contemporaries are what they are not supposed to be. You know, high class civil servants and uh, scientists and whatever you. But um, I came out of that trash can. And uh, I found my Africanness when I went to America. I lived in Chicago and uh, Ellis, I think it was. Ellis, 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 Ellis Avenue. 650 Ellis Avenue. And my room was like a box room. And uh, my dream and fantasy about America, especially the American black, the black American, the African American, in my time they used to call it Negroes. Uh, you see, the African American has been portrayed as a joker, always smiling, no blues, always dancing, had the Cadillac car, lives in the penthouse, you know, that kind of false impression. So I assimilated a lot of that. And when I went to America and found that it wasn't like that, uh, it was hard and rough going for people of my heritage, and I also experienced a little bit of it, or more of it than even them, because I was a, a total stranger in their land. I had to change my lifestyle almost to be like theirs, but I was able to retain mine. <coughs> so all this is to tell you that when one finds his African heritage, nothing else matters. If, you, if you're lucky to break away from the humdrum of the, of, uh, the prevailing Western cultures and Asiatic cultures and everything, and find your, your Africanness, it's a wonderful feeling which uh, you can't transmit to anybody. You have to find it. It's like a religion. You experience something which has been yours all the time, but which you have rejected because of this brainwashing system and uh, found at last. And uh, then you want to tell the world what you've missed. So you you don't conform to the Western idea of things. You don't put on shoes because you don't want to, you don't want to have anything to do with the West unless you have to. I mean, when somebody sees me, you say right away, that's an African. I should be able to identify with me right away, my name and everything. 
I used to be called Guy Warren when I was I was under the influence of the American uh, American culture. Uh, my father kind of christened me Warren Gamilio. I quit after him. But when I became an American, folks, I dropped the Aquay and shortened the Gamilio to Guy and kept the Warren and became Guy Warren because I wanted to be an American. And I went through the mill in America and I found that this wasn't what I wanted. So I changed my name, or rather added something else to my name for identification purposes of Ghana. So I became Guy Warren of Ghana. Uh, for some time, for about four, five years, six years, but I wasn't happy with that too. And I wanted a name which would identify me with my with my culture and my race and everything, my blackness. So I thought of Kwame Ba, Kwame meaning uh, outside of war. But there are a lot of fathers. He's not the only father. Mm -hmm. And then my ego, this muse which rises on my shoulder, says, what the hell do you want to name yourself after Kwame? Mm -hmm. you know, why don't you name yourself after your country? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I said, okay, it is Ganaba. And I knew I had it right there. Yeah. And the translation is not son of Ghana, but mm -hmm. it's born, born of Ghana. So that it could be applied to uh, both sexes. I'm born of Ghana, not son of Ghana. Oh. And Ganaba is now my name. Um, Another thing which I like to report, when I came from America uh, in 1968, I would meet with old friends of mine and newly found, found friends, and we would be talking, and they wouldn't know what I was saying. They said, do you sound different? Do you sound, do you sound very, very like uh, an African. I, I don't hear what you're saying. I don't understand. And uh, it was such a, such a, a revelation to me that I knew I had to drop my, quote, Americanisms and American whatever. And uh, I've been doing that gradually. Now when I talk to people, they hear what I'm saying, they understand it. <laughs> uh, I have become an African-speaking American. I'm not an American, but I'm African speaking American English, if you want to say that. So this is the change. It's all it all boils down to an awareness of what you have and then this this urge to make up for what you haven't done, what you have not been able to do for this culture. I spent twenty five years or thirty years of my life doing the white man's thing. So now that I've found myself, I'm in a hurry. You know, it's, it's speed. But then we have to hurry slowly. And that's what I'm doing. To make up for uh, lost time, lost service to, to Africa. So that's what it is. Plan your Africa and you will not let her go. <laughs> <laughs> I recall reading your book. I have a story to tell. Do you intend to write another book or...? Yeah, I'm writing a book. I've been writing a book for the past 15 years. The complete, you know, biography and experiences and everything. It's going to be like a Bible or, or something like an encyclopedia. You have to have a donkey to come and collect it from the library. It will be so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what would that be called? Oh, that's uh, Ganaba. Autobiography, then? Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. The Divine Grammar. His life and times. <laughs>